everybody! Welcome to the Good Evening Kitties podcast, a Tales from the Crip review. My name is Melissa, your ghostess with the mostess, and today's episode is Season 6, Episode 9, Stared in Horror. I have with me returning guest host, Mike. Hi, Mike! Hey, everybody! How's it going? Oh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I do know. (laughs) (laughs) But you're going, everything's good? Oh, I suppose so. Cool, you ready to talk about this episode? I mean... That's what I'm here for. So that's true. Yeah. I mean, we've wanted to do this episode together for a while. This one's uh, "Stared in Horror" is one that we both like. That really doesn't have a whole lot to it, but it's got a fun twist. As always, John Cassier is the voice of the Crypt Keeper, and Danny Elfman does the theme song. This episode was directed by Stephen Hopkins, who also directed Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child, which is a kind of weird one, and two other Tales from the Crypt episodes, Abracadaver and Beauty Rest. The screenplay was by Coleman Decay and Teller, as in Penn and Teller. Hmm. Yeah, he would have helped write the screenplay for this. Well, you know, is that the only uh, Tales from the Crypt thing that he did? Or yeah, what? I think so. Okay. Uh, this episode stars D.B. Sweeney from movies like Fire in the Sky and The Cutting Edge, Rachel Tikotin from movies like Total Recall, and R. Lee Ermey from movies like Full Metal Jacket and The Frighteners. And just playing every single sergeant major in every movie. You need someone to scream at you in a militaristic way? He's your guy. Yeah, definitely. This episode aired December 14th, 1994. So I'm going to go ahead now and read the description on the back of the box for Season 6, Episode 9, Stared in Horror. Welcome, stranger. A fugitive holes up in a decrepit manse inhabited by an old lady and by an upstairs curse. Look at them using the word manse. Yeah. Putting on airs here. Why do they have to say upstairs curse? They, I guess yeah. that's not too bad. But yeah, sometimes like they'll blow it in the description or the picture. Sometimes you wonder if they just don't assume that everyone who's ever seen... They don't they don't think there's going to be newcomers. They think the only people that are going to buy the DVD set are like people who already know about the show or have already watched it. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the one reason like you would buy these DVDs if you were like already a huge fan. There's 93 episodes. There's going to be a couple you might forget. That'd be nice to run through the Right. When I I only knew again. like two or three, you know, growing up until we actually started buying the set. So See, I think one of the reasons I like this one too is I think Stared in Horror might have been played quite a bit. Yes. And I mean, I remember this one a lot from when I was younger. And so, like I said, it's, it's not like a super like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. But it's actually really average. Yeah. Like it's it's not, there's not really that much that sets it apart from a lot of the other episodes. But it's got a fun twist and it's all shot in just one location. It's just in that house in the main room yeah. on the staircase. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started here. So this episode starts out with the Crypt Keeper, of course. And he's painting, I believe. Yeah, he's painting. He's got like a little beatnik type you know, sweater and a peace sign on and a little like beret type hat on. And he's like quoting poetry. He's doing a poem about painting and throwing in puns along with it, of course. When I think of you, my heart goes flopsy as I contemplate your sweet autopsy. Your skin is green and blue, whatever would I do without my fine cadaver? The love in which I know I'll fall starts with the uncandest cut of all. Thank you, thank you. Keeping with the rising tradition of the intro segment having nothing to do whatsoever (laughs) with the actual episode. And just like snap, 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 you know, for the poetry. But yeah, it doesn't really quite have anything to do with it except maybe you're reaching well what about what about the I way i can tell you're gonna reach what about the way that the curse is said to her from the guy it's a little <sighs> like poetic isn't it um vaguely perhaps okay well they don't go too much into it but see that's another thing here's another thing where they they blow it by the cover oh yeah oh man you know this is the kind of thing to where i'm glad i'm not that observant sometimes because even though i've seen this several times growing up i completely forgot about the twist at the end I didn't notice this, but yeah, on the cover of the page, you see like just a baby surrounded by macabre imagery. And and an an old old man. man. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, that's what will happen by the end. But it's like, I don't know, I guess like if you already knew that was coming, that's fine. But if you're showing this to someone and you're starting the episode up, 
And even if you've never seen this before, back when it would show on HBO, you'd be like, maybe you wouldn't, you wouldn't get it at first. You'd be like, that's weird. Why is there a baby and an old dude? And then by the end, you're like, oh, okay. But it kind of also gives it away. You're like waiting yeah. for, I like it when it's a little more vague with the punishment fits the crime or whatever. It was just her precariously balanced on the scales of justice <laughs> and like a guy with a gavel, like in the background. And you're just like, yeah, okay, it's about a court. You know, you don't know exactly what happens. But yeah, then there's somewhere you're just like, no. Now I know <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah, so the Crypt Creeper brings in the episode. And I don't think this is a period piece. It just seems, I think the, the mansion's just old. Uh, you know, you've seen so many classic movies that are set, like from the 30s to the 60s, about a guy I mean, running it, through the forest in the deep south being pursued by... Yeah. So I mean, well, I mean, as far as period piece go, it could be... With the situation and how the guy's dressed, it could be anything from like 1930 to now, pretty much. Yeah, he's dressed just in regular, I don't know. I don't think it really matters. I don't think, well, maybe I didn't get that good a look at what he was dressed as, but mainly because I was more concerned with the character. Yeah, we'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, so it starts out and it's just like, I think they're in like Louisiana or somewhere like that. And he's running through the forest and it's dark, night is falling, and there's just lots of plants and fog. And he's running and people are shouting at him. There's like a bunch of guys after him. And he's, you know, a wanted fugitive uh, running away from the law. His name is Clyde. Of course it is. <laughs> and it's played by D.B. Sweeney. He's just running and escaping. And they're just doing the credits or all this. It's a very long kind of... Oh. Yeah, it's a bit drawn out. It's a couple minutes before he even gets to the house. It's just him running. It's like they're trying to, I don't know, you think they're trying to Well, this episode's kind of this. a short one. It, yeah. You know, it's it's only like 20 minutes or something. I mean, and really, there's not much to it. So he's running, he falls, all this stuff. And he shows up at this old mansion that's like a kind of like a plantation house yeah. surrounded by like a bayou kind of thing. And it looks decrepit a bit from the outside, but I think a lot of it's just the plants because there's lamps on and, and he's showing up and he's been injured because he fell. The lights are on and he's like, oh, cool. You know, maybe someone will let me in so I can hide. Right? And by the lights being on, they're just literally there's lanterns swinging in the breeze. <laughs> yeah, again, that's kind of why it's, it's hard to tell if it's... Like a period thing or not. You could have just went out and lit those lanterns. It doesn't really matter. Probably. So he's knocking and you can see like they're flash. Yeah, they got flashlights or whatever. So he's like, they're looking for him. And he's at the door and he's like, please, please let me in. And then this lady, a lot of it is shot from peephole point of views in this episode. And so it shows like him from him. You know, you see him being like looking through the thing. And he's, I think he has a gash on his head or something. But he's like, you know, can you let me in? And then you see this old eye on the other side. Like, what? What's happening? You know, <laughs> She's like, I don't know what. And uh here to kill me in my sleep. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm all by myself. I can't just go letting you in. I mean, I feel bad for you, but I mean, I'm an old lady all by myself. This isn't smart for me. Like I can't do this. And he's like, "Oh, I totally understand. I get it." And then he starts like bringing up his own mom and, and stuff like that and laying on a little bit of guilt. And then he collapses in front of the door, which I'm not sure if it was genuine or not, cuz he did get a head injury. So I mean, I think he did actually collapse. Eh. But, it, I mean, I'm not sure if he's, like, faking it. Given what this guy's like, I'm not willing to give him the benefit of a doubt on anything, so eh. I'm going to say it's faked. Anybody home? Yes? Lady, I'm hurt real bad. You you think you could help me out? Oh, you poor thing. I wish I could let you in, but I'm all alone. Oh, uh, that's all right, I understand. I wouldn't want my own mother to open the door middle of the night. That's all right. I understand. I just, I just. Young man, oh. what is it? Oh. Young man? Oh, lady. Well, look at you. Damn. So she opens up the door and he's down on the floor and looks up. It's this woman and she's had a, she's got a lot of old makeup on. She's old. This old gingham dress that clearly would have been. Oh like no, it's not gingham. It's it's basically just. Nineteenth century for sure. <laughs> she's wearing wispy tissue paper and cobwebs. That's what she's wearing. It's a dress with like a reddish old shawl and it's literally wispy, crinkly, just like her hair. I think she, I mean she looks pretty cool. But then she's also got like cobwebs on her. Like she just can't be bothered to dust herself off. This is how <laughs> old she is. She was always used to having other people do it for her. I guess. And he's kind of shocked. He's just like, oh, 
dang, you're like really old, okay. And But he's like, well, it doesn't matter. People are coming to get me. I gotta go. So he just like crawls into the house and shuts the door like, oh, thank you. They're gonna come knock on this door. Obviously, they're gonna find the house and... And this is where you start yeah. to see just how scummy he is. Yeah, explain it, Mike, because you when you're he pretty... starts, I don't know, like, whenever I first saw this episode as a kid, you don't pick up on this stuff, right? But then, you know, he's, he's saying that, well, the reason they're chasing me is because, you know, I was, I was dating the sheriff's daughter, you know, and uh, she's really young, but I don't mind. And I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, so you're a pedophile, is what you're saying. Yeah, it, it, it's. I think he says the age. Does he? I, I can't remember. It, it was implied that yeah, she was quite young, though, compared to him. He doesn't say the age, but the implication. And I guess something happened, or maybe he assaulted her or something, and then the sheriff found out, and now they're all after him. Well, we, we actually get to the real reason why they're after him later on, and it's not that. But the fact that he, he the first idea to distract her from the unpleasant truth of what he really did yeah, that's true. is, hey, I'm, I'm dating an underage girl, and, and, and the townsfolk just don't understand. Well, he's man. trying to imply it's I'm more like, of like, it's love, at, they're in love, but their love isn't understood, and so now everyone's after him isn't that horrible love. But it's like kind of brushed over real quick. You're just like, okay. I don't know, it kind of stuck with me. Yeah, I know, you, it was stuck with you pretty good. But yeah, so she's like, oh, that's crazy. That's all? Okay, well, yeah, I can, you know, I love romance. I'm so into romance. But there's like tons of candles and lanterns and things lit in this. And it's just a really old, dusty house. It looks very antique, like it's been here a while. One of the gives is the fact that there's like a gas lamp of some sort. Like, like everything is Everything is like ancient in this house. There's nothing from like past 1910 in here. No, so. including her. Yeah. <laughs> So then there's a knock on the door, and then now you get the peephole view of Arlie Ermey in his, like, sergeant uh, outfit, <laughs> sheriff outfit, and he's just like, ma'am. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, we're chasing a young man down around here. He's about six foot two. Got a tattoo of a die on his neck right about here. Have you seen him? Tattoo of what? He got a tattoo of a die, you know, seven cup eleven. Have you seen the guy? No, I don't think so. Why? He's a killer, ma'am. Praise on old people like yourself. Earlier today, he beat up and robbed old Chappie Hardy down at the Circle K. A little while ago, Chappie died. Oh, dear. His name's Clyde Boudreaux. Now, he talks a good line and he looks almost normal. But the simple fact is, he's a monster. Well, I assure you, Chair. I have not seen anybody that fits that description. Kind of yelling, but not, like, I don't know. He's just, he's got one volume. <laughs> he's like, have you seen this guy? You know, he's wanted. And he's got a tattoo of, like, a, a die, like a dice, you know, on his neck. And immediately, Clyde's just, like, pulling up his collar, like, mm, you don't need to see that. But it's like, she already kind of knows he's wanted, so I don't know yeah. why he's even trying to hide well, it. Well, here's the thing. We also learned from the sheriff exactly why they're searching for this guy. He preys on old people. He is an asshole that nearly beat an old man to death just for like a, his money or something. Yeah, he takes advantage of people who are vulnerable. Yeah. And so she's definitely in danger if he sticks around here and he'd probably do it again. And really, you find out, I mean, yeah, he's he'll throw anyone under the bus, especially the vulnerable and elderly and things. He's like, I don't care. It does kind of subvert like some tropes because there are so many movies where... Like, you know, the corrupt hick sheriff and his minions are chasing some poor guy who's either an out-of-towner or has a misunderstanding, or he's a local persecuted man. Usually we're on this, we're, we've seen this so many times before that, you know, the audience is thinking, oh, this poor guy needs to get away. No, he's, he's an asshole, and the law is actually right in this case, so, um... <laughs> The sheriff and his guys leave, right? They're like, okay, like he, they kind of buy it. You know, they're just like, all right, like they're kind of doing another perimeter check kind of thing. And so she starts wandering off into the dining room and there's like an old harp and all this. And she's like, let me get you a drink. And everything's just really dusty. Yeah, it's all very gone with the wind. The accents, especially on DB Sweetie, oh, are kind of God. all over the place. Well, that's <laughs> kind of a running thing in here. I don't, I don't know, you, you know, accents are, are hard to get, right? But there's kind of a running thing in not just Tales of the Crypt, but a lot of 90s movies, early 2000s movies, even to this day, where like a Southern, the character will be Southern as fuck, right? But the person that's voicing them, the accent bounces all over the place. 
I mean, like, some accents are hard to do, but it's just kind of funny to me when it goes back and forth in a set time. Right, right. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking either maybe he's not from the South and he's trying to pretend that he is <laughs> to get more sympathy if, from her is what I'm thinking. If, if we're going to give the, the episode a lot of credit, then I suppose we could go that route. Yeah, I mean, I think that could be what it is and why it keeps kind of fluctuating. But see, also, like, D.B. Sweeney was born in New York, so maybe he has more of a New York accent and he's trying to... Which, what, and, and then here's me just thinking, why couldn't you just cast someone from Louisiana? So, the woman's name is Lillian Charbonnet, which I thought was kind of a fun name. Oh, French. Lillian is pouring a drink and she's talking about her late husband. I think his name is Harlan. That could be wrong. I don't know. He's like, I don't give a shit about your husband, lady. Like, he completely swaps his previous thing. Now that he's going to be safe, he's like, now listen up. Give me the keys to your car and all this stuff and I got to get out of here. She doesn't have anything like that. She doesn't have a car. No. (laughs) She, I don't, she don't have a phone. I don't think she doesn't have anything. She's been in this house for a while. She says some nice young man looks after her. Um, I guess brings her groceries. I don't know if she eats. <laughs> well, we'll, she get drinks. In, we'll, we'll get into that. I mean, so, yeah. Well, we're getting into it now. Okay, we're, she, we're just going to talk about the fact that she's immortal. I mean, we just said it in the description. That is the curse. I know, I know. Well, obviously she's immortal, because otherwise she'd be long dead. She was... Well, I don't know. She looks pretty old, so maybe she's just going to get ancient and ancient and ancient until she crumbles away. She's, like, hitting on him, which is funny. She's like, a oh, man, I haven't seen one of these in forever. And she's all old, and she's pouring his drink, and she's like, you make me feel young and, restle- and reckless tonight. <laughs> and he's like, excuse me? Well, I mean, that goes into the idea that you picked up on her narcissism before. Yes. She kind of implies that a long time ago when she was married, you know, she had a lot of, not really suitors, but everyone always told her how beautiful she was. So Clyde is just looking around the house and kind of casing the joint, seeing what he he could take. Because a lot of stuff is antique. And he's like, great. Like, she gives him a drink. And then when he puts the drink down, he just breaks it. He just throws it against the wall and breaks it. I'm like, you could just put the glass down. Classy. I was kind of hoping that would come back later, like he would step on it or something, you know? You see, though, that would be more but, interesting writing. But, yeah. So, <laughs> I like this episode. You shush. I, I kid. You know, so there, he's just, like, mad at her. And she's, just stay the night here. I'm going to go to bed. And she's like, you know, I'd appreciate it if you stay downstairs um, and sleep down here. And I'm going to go upstairs. You know, we don't want to get fresh in the middle of the night. I know how this can be. And he's just like, okay, lady, calm down. <laughs> A 120-year-old lady. And so she starts heading upstairs, and while he, she's heading upstairs, he goes in the other room and is kind of looking at, he's like going to take her pocket watch and looking at like candlesticks. And he's walking through the house, and he finds an old sword from like, I don't know, probably like World War One or the Civil War, it's something like Civil that. War. Civil War. Yeah. yeah, and he's just swinging it around. The American Civil War. Yeah, the American Civil War. Like, it's real old. Playing around with all her stuff, and the candles are all just left lit down there. And then he hears a voice uh, or something like that, yeah. And he, he comes up to the f- entryway of the mansion and looks up, and there's a beautiful woman upstairs in a red dress. And he's like, wait, I thought she was alone here. And he's just like, are you like the great, 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 great daughter, you know, kind of thing of that woman? She's up here, and she's like, my name is Lillian. You can call me Lily. And he's like, great. And he starts to run up the stairs because, you know, he wants to assault her. I guess is <laughs> he's like I got this head injury oh, and I'm man. gross and sweaty but she's this beautiful woman and no one else is here except the old lady so here I go and he starts heading up the stairs and he's got this accent too where at one point when he sees her or he hears her he's like who dat Clyde Clyde who dat well you the old woman great great granddaughter or something something like that I trust you have everything you need down there not yet. Well, now I know where to find it. What do they call you, darling? Lillian Chabonet. Call me Lily. Okay, Lily. Uh, not such a good idea. Why not? Oh, you afraid we're gonna wake up the old mummy? It's not that. It's This house has rules. Okay, well then you come on down here. Well, I don't know. It's late. Come on, Shaw. Just want to get a closer look at you. You promise you won't bite? <laughs> well. Nope. <laughs> Come to daddy. 
<laughs> you devil dog. But she's also kind of intrigued. She hasn't seen a man in a while. She's like, great. She's like a bit, a bit thirsty too. She's being a little flirty and he's like, yeah, okay. And kind of flirting from the stairs to the top of the stairs. She's like, well, how about you make us a couple of highballs and I'll come down there. Even though they don't have club soda or seltzer or anything, they just have brandy. She just wants, she's just like, put some alcohol in a glass. <laughs> I'm going to come downstairs. And he's like, cool. All right. All right. So he goes in there and starts making the drinks. And then she comes down there and is old and creeps up behind him and like starts to like hit on him from behind and like he just about kills her he turns around (laughs) and is freaked out and i feel like you should have maybe explained that before because he easily could have turned and either stabbed you with that sword or hit you in the face or something you're frail now and you're just like nah he'll still be interested as I come downstairs. I don't know if she's still stuck in her vanity. I mean, as an old lady, she still probably feels like she's young. These are both horrible people, <laughs> you know. She's not that bad, okay? She's a she's vain, but she's not like... She's not running around beating people and killing them and stuff. True. I mean, obviously, he's the worst. And so there's these pictures on the wall of a beautiful woman that are, like, painted in a man in a uniform. And she starts telling the story. Like, they head back over towards the stairs. And she's like, my husband was so dashing and I was so beautiful and I was a bride. And he had to go off to a war and all this stuff. And everyone told me how beautiful I was. And he was such a, like, doting, loving husband. And then he went off to war. And then no one was around to pay me any attention. You didn't pay attention to me, me. Yeah, pay attention to me. <laughs> and... I mean, maybe she at least flirted or maybe had other suitors before. I don't know. But whatever the reason, this one man comes calling to her door, like or shows up at her door, not comes calling, but he just shows up. And I think he's kind of like, was he kind of like a fugitive too, I think? Or he just, he was like some wounded guy or something shows up at her door. No word from him for months. No one to tell her she looked pretty. And one night this young man came to the door. Is anyone there? Yes. May I help you? Pardon me, pretty lady. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to be bothering you. I, I seem to have lost my way. I... Oh, my goodness. Are you hurt? You look famished. He was hungry. Well, please, do come in. Come in. He was beautiful. That morning, her husband came home without warning and found them together in bed. Get out of here! He took the young man by the throat and started to drag him down the stairs. I didn't know. I... No, Harlan, no. Get off me. Please, oh, Get stop. Off me. He would have killed him. If I hadn't remembered the pistol in my dresser drawer. Harlan, stop. Blood everywhere. No young man will ever climb these stairs to your bed again. He was dying and he cursed me. No young man will ever climb these stairs to your bed again. Nor will you descend these stairs in a shape that pleases men. He puts a curse on her. Well, a curse on her and the whole house. Yeah. So she's stuck in this house forever, just aging, I guess. So every time she comes up to the top of the stairs, she's a beautiful young woman. She gets down to the bottom, she's like 100 years old, and then vice versa. So any guy... So I guess the way to fix that is if you get like a male baby to crawl up the stairs and you guys can both be young on the stairs. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, the the baby's just going to age. It's still going to have the mind of a baby. Oh, yeah, that's true. Which is a ter- which is really Oh my god, that's, that's gross. That's pretty terrible. Yeah. That's gross, man. <laughs> Yeah, so she can't ever have another male lover. Doesn't say anything about female, but she can't have another male lover. I see, that's an interesting loophole. Yeah. So she tells about the curse, and so he starts heading up the stairs like, you're crazy. But as he is, his hair starts falling out, (laughs) and he's getting older and older as he's heading up the stairs. And he's like, oh my gosh, that's insane. And she's, you know, getting younger. And they kind of meet uh, halfway on the staircase. And so basically, if she ever wants to be with any man, you got to kind of do it on the staircase. It's the only way to get... Where they both can be middle-aged. Yeah, they can both be like in their 30s and 40s or whatever if you meet halfway on the stairs. And then you can just do it on the stairs. Well, she actually mocks her husband, too, like saying, like, he didn't think of stairs. Yeah. (laughs) There's a loophole to this curse. She's like, I'll just do it here. It's fine with me. Personally, that sounds a bit uncomfortable, but... Yeah, you gotta do like you... some pretty wide stairs. You gotta do what you gotta do, though, I guess. I mean, I would just be afraid of falling down. Mm. And he's just like, yeah, I'm cool, I'm down with that. Even though he's a little freaked out about the curse, he's still like, well, you know, when in Rome, uh, <laughs> when in Louisiana with a curse, <laughs> go, <laughs> go for it. So they start kissing and everything, you know, they're, they're kissing oh, and stuff. Nom, nom. That's when there's a knock on the door and the sheriff, Arlie Ermey, and the guys are back looking for him. 
so she's like, okay, we'll go upstairs and, and hide and you'll be old. And then, you know, I'll answer the door old and be like, he my old husband. <laughs> we old. So he heads so... upstairs and he's starting to like slow as he heads because he's just like, you get really old. Like he's ancient up there. Oh, yeah. So she answers the door, and again, they have, like, the peep hole of Ermie, like, ma'am, we just wanted to double check, think maybe he broke into the house, just so we could look in your house. And she's like, okay, and so they let him in, and he's upstairs hiding, like, kind of panicked, because they have a, a German shepherd with them. He's a and good boy. He's a good I, boy. Again, like, I love, I love how, like, media does this. You, you can tell, like, this is a, a happy, happy doggo, who is just like... <laughs> Oh, his, yeah. his tail is wagging. He's, he's jumping at you because he wants to play. But they're ADRing, like, snarling sounds yeah, on top of this that. This dog is super happy with his, like, tongue flopping out. And they're, like, having him go, rawr, rawr, you know, like, bark yeah. real hard. And you're like, oh, yeah, he's so fierce. He probably just gave everyone kisses on the set. Yeah. So they bring the dog into the dog's barking. In the, and Clyde is worried because he's like, I, he can, I mean, obviously the dog can tell probably that that's mm. the scent he's still picking up. Oh, yeah. You know, they're like, let us look around. The dog's barking. Arlie Armory's got the dog. He's like, would you mind if we look upstairs? And she's like, I mean, just, you know, my, I think she says like my husband, yeah, my husband's up there. He's, you know, old and ill or whatever. (laughs) And so the dog takes off and pulls away from Arlie Ermy and starts running through the house. And they're like, sorry, we'll go get the dog. And so then the dog starts heading up. And as he's heading up, Clyde gets scared and starts running towards the attic stairs. So there's even more ad- like stairs in this house. And so as he's heading toward the attic stairs and up the attic stairs, you get even older. You can't even walk anymore. So the dog starts heading up the stairs and what happens to the dog, Mike? The poor doggy. I know why, you, why you're asking me because you know what I'm gonna say here. The dog starts aging all of a sudden. Its hair goes white. He starts aging. And, it start, and, it start, and, and the poor boy starts just whimpering. Of course, all ADR or whatever. Yeah, but he's um, scared because he's yeah. He starts getting like a white muzzle and coming up yeah. the stairs. I'm sorry to bother you again, ma'am, but do you suppose I could come inside? Well, I'm sorry, Sheriff. Weren't you the one who told me not to let anybody in? <laughs> Oh, this is serious now. The dog keeps circling around, coming back to this house. Now, we seem to think that, hey, heel, heel gator, heel boy, easy now. We're thinking that maybe he broke into the house and you're not aware of it, man. Broke in here? Yeah, broke in here. Sweet Lord. Hey, settle down now, gator. Heel. Yeah, are you alone here in the house, ma'am? There's nobody else here but me and my man upstairs. I would dearly like to look around if you don't mind. Chill out, Gator. Settle down. Give it a break. Easy now. Well, honestly, Chef, I'm fine. Well, fine, my husband and I. He hasn't been well. So think about the implications of this, right? <laughs> Okay, so it's not just any man who goes up. It's any male of anything. Any male, anything. So, which I feel like she probably didn't even know that herself. Well, but but think about this. Like, I know he was so pissed. He's like, she can't curse, be with any male at all. His, should she decide to do bestiality? The curse assumes that she's gonna go. At, <laughs> that she's so that she's low, low down. He is so hurt by her that he just assumes, well, y- y'all gonna fuck anything. <laughs> So I'm going to make sure that this... <laughs> so this poor dog is like, bar, You know, <laughs> you don't know. And he starts like, he gets scared and runs back down the stairs. And so she goes running up the stairs too to find Clyde, but she can't find him and she's getting younger. Do the sheriff and stuff take off? I don't even know if they show... You see, you know, that's what's crazy is this guy is such a coward. He, he, he runs all the way into the, like, deep, deep into the attic. Yeah, they don't even... the upper stories. Yeah, but they don't even show what happens to the sheriff. I guess they just get spooked by the dog. The, yeah, they, they, it's assumed that as the voice is received that they kind of just leave. Probably uh-huh. because the sheriff was embarrassed because in his eyes the dog attacked an elderly man. And so they're, they're probably wanting to hightail out of there before, you know, anything, anything else can happen. So now it shows the attic, right? And Clyde is there and he, it's kind of scary looking. Like he's really old. His hand is all like decrepit. His face has like these white eyes. They're mm. all white. Like he's 
pretty much dead, but he won't die. Like he's just. It reminds me there. of Hellraiser when Uncle Frank comes back, right before he's got all his skin back. That, but not gooey. Like imagine yeah. if that was all dried out. Yeah, dry. And so yeah, and he's up there and he can't even move. He's so old and decrepit. He's just stuck. So he can't get back to the staircase to climb down and get younger. So she heads up the stairs to find him. So when she gets to the top of the stairs and he's like, oh, great, she's here. She'll help me down. She's a baby. Yeah, this is surreal. It really is. She's a baby. And so then he's like, oh, no, you know, because then she can't even help or, you know, eventually she'll come back down, but he can't even move. I mean, he'll just lay there, I guess, forever. But what's weird is like she comes up and she's not drowning in a dress. She's naked. (laughs) (laughs) She's a naked baby. And crawling towards him, like, happy and stuff. And I'm just like, shouldn't she be, like, tripping in a giant dress? No <laughs> actually, way. actually, now that I've noticed, you do, there is a red dress behind. She just crawls she out. She crawls of out of the dress. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. I was going to say, why didn't she just crawl out of the dress? But she does. It's just in a puddle behind, or a pile behind her in the doorway. So he's like, oh, no. And the baby's like a goo goo. And then that's it. That's the end of the episode. They're just, like, stuck. She'll never be able to get him out of there. And he's probably never going to be able to crawl towards the door. Yeah. It's kind of frustrating because I feel like eventually you could roll or something, but he's in a lot of pain and it's creepy. And so then that's the end of the episode and it cuts back to the Crypt Keeper and he's still in his little beatnik type outfit. <laughs> Crypt Keeper, you're so punny. And the best Crypt Keeper pun is... Poor Clyde. I guess that's one 12-step program he could have done without. Still, you'll be happy to know, kiddies, that our story has a happy ending. Clyde did manage, after a couple of years, to crawl a little way down the stairs, where he waited for Lily while she gruesome. <laughs> you know what they say, age before booty. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Mike, what did you think of this episode? I don't want to say, like, average, average. I mean, what's weird is I watched this, like, a long time ago. We weren't really allowed to watch shows like this growing up in a, an extremely conservative household. But every once in a while, when we were on vacation to, like, Florida someplace in the summertime, stop at a motel on the way to or from, and, you know, they, they would turn it on. And this, and every time they switched over to HBO, this episode seemed to be on. It was uncanny. Like, every single time we went out. <laughs> Not, like, other, like, Tales from episodes, but this one in particular. So I must have seen it, like, five or six times growing up. And, yeah, it's it's okay. I mean, I probably, growing up, would have enjoyed way other many other episodes way more than this one. I think, for me, I just really like the twist. I like the curse. I like the curse, is what I like. Yeah. I think it's an interesting curse. And, you know, you don't realize it at first. And then it, you see it and you're like, oh, okay. I think some of it's, like, a little rushed. That's just weird. It's like, it takes its time, but also it feels rushed. Yeah, but it's also... That's a strange feeling. I don't know. It just doesn't play out in the end. They're just kind of like, oh, here they go. They're stuck up here forever now. Like, she never went up. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter like, for I her. I feel they would have been able to flesh it out more had they used, like, you know, the opening two minutes of, instead of just him running. Yeah. <laughs> just a thought. Yeah. But, hey, you know... At the same time, this is like, what, this is season six we're yes. dealing with, winding down. I don't know if they were having production issues or what. I don't think so. so. I like that it's all in just like one room and so like one building, you know. Mm. I, th- I like that it's, it plays almost kind of like a play and a little bit like some of the dialogue. Oh, you, you, you could definitely adapt this to a play. I feel like it'd be a little to hard stage. to do the props for the makeup. I guess if you use fog and it. like run around. But uh, yeah, I mean, I still like the episode. I think it's an interesting one, even though it doesn't really have a whole lot of substance. Or have different actors, you know, you get like an older actor to play the older version. Well, yeah, and then have them just walk behind like a curtain. And yeah, then co- this, yeah. Could, this could be easily pulled off. I yeah, think. yeah, that'd be fun. And then you just, at the end, you just have a baby. <laughs> <come up. laughs> just just in baby. the middle of the stage. Just some baby. So there's no IMDb trivia for this episode. For season six, episode nine, Stared in Horror. The next episode is season six, episode 10, In the Groove. Um, before we close out here, I have a review to read on the podcast that someone left on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. This one is from Drunk Satan Robot. Drunk Satan Robot. I yes. love it. Yes. And it says, hello, kitties. Ha 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 ha. Crip Keeper rules. Thanks, Melissa, for making this show. Love the show as a kid. Brings me back. Thank you so much for that review. Five stars, it says, too. Fuck yeah. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. If you want to leave a review on iTunes or Facebook or Podcast Republic, Mike, thanks for being on the podcast today. It was my pleasure. Yay. 
If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at goodeveningpod at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and on Twitter at Gek Podcast or at G-E-K Podcast. You can follow Gus the Podcat on his Instagram page at a sweet cat named Gus. And yeah, like, rate, review, subscribe, all that. You can support the podcast monetarily. I have a new Kofi page or Kofi page. Kofi page? No, not Kofi feed. Coffee. Don't. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> you can buy me a coffee. Anyway, thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Have a good one. Bye. Mike, say bye. Bye Bye-bye.